Automation tools are supposed to make your life easier, right? But with so many options out there, like NNN, Make.com, and Gumloop, how do you know which one is the best fit for your needs? In this video, I'm going to break down each one's features, pricing, and unique strengths. Plus, I'm going to share what I actually use to power both my internal operations and client projects within my AI agency. Now, let's just start with what these tools are actually about. So N8N is an open source automation platform designed for developers and you know power users, if you will. Being that this is open source, this means that you can run it on your own server on N8N's cloud, or you can third party host it like on railway.com for as little as just $5 every single month. So this supports advanced features like multiple triggers inside of your workflows, custom code nodes, and AI agents that dynamically interact with all of your data. Make.com, this is going to focus on ease of use with its drag and drop interface. So this is perfect for creating pretty complex workflows without writing any code. And this also offers the most integrations with over 1500 pre-built integrations for popular apps. Now Gumloop on the other hand, this is a new player in the automation space, you know, pretty much focused on AI first workflows, I would say. Gumloop offers tools like web scraping nodes, AI driven decision making, and even a Chrome extension, which is pretty useful that allows you to build browser based automations, which I will get into later in this video. Now me personally, I started my automation journey with make.com. So it was great for, I would say, visualizing workflows and connecting apps moderately quickly. But you know, as my projects grew more complex, inevitably, especially when I just needed multiple triggers in a single workflow, or maybe even just like a custom code, because in make.com, you have to go with third party integrations like zero code kit, for example. And that is going to require a subscription with that third party to actually do any sort of coding, like inserting JavaScript or Python. So I found myself just constantly hitting limitations within make.com. And that's really just when I discovered N8N. So I'll kind of just go over some of the reasons why I switched. And you know, you guys can do with this information as you will. But the first thing, as I mentioned, is just multiple triggers. So that was really like the last straw. Unlike most platforms that really just allow one trigger per workflow, N8N just allows you to set up workflows that respond to multiple events simultaneously. So for example, you can have one trigger, just listen for a webhook, and you can have another one that monitors changes in a database. You know, this is all going to be within the same workflow, which can be super helpful. And this flexibility, it really just made building certain scenarios much easier easier and also more logical. You know, it just made sense for me. Another one was cost efficiency. So since N8N is open source, I host it on railway.com for just $5 a month. So this gives me basically unlimited executions without worrying about escalating costs that I might incur on make.com or maybe Zapier because that's another pretty popular no code software. And another one is custom code nodes, similar leads to Gumloop as well, which I'll cover that later. But with N8N, you could just throw your JavaScript or your Python straight into your workflows. So this is pretty useful and it can be crucial for building tailored solutions for any of my clients without needing any third party services or any premium plans. So it allows us to just have some more complexity, I would say, to each of these workflows. But, you know, if you can't add any libraries, if you were to code outside of N8N, like on Pydantic or anything like that. Another one is Langchain integration. So under the hood, N8N leverages Langchain to power its AI capabilities. So that's all it really is. So this means that you can actually build some pretty advanced AI agents that are going to integrate pretty seamlessly within your workflows whether that's going to be summarizing documents or dynamically integrating with whatever API HubSpot, who knows. So let's just dive a little bit deeper into what actually makes N8N unique and go over some of their features just a little bit further. So the first one, self-hosting. So being that N8N is open source, I would say that this is one of the biggest advantages of using this platform over all the other ones. So you can host this on your own server or use third-party platforms like, as I mentioned already, railway.com or maybe AWS. So if you are interested in learning how to self-host N8N, cheap and easy, check out some of my videos. I just uploaded one this past week going over how you can use railway.com. It's just $5 a month and you're getting really unlimited executions, I would say. Also, if you want to scale it up, you know, you'll just have to pay a little bit more, but you know, that's going to be rare for the common user. But anyways, number two is AI agents. So this is a huge feature and why I would say 90% of the people actually use N8N over anything else. 
uh, like make.com, which I know make.com, you know, just talking to their team a few weeks ago, they are releasing an AI agent feature very soon. So that's kind of their top priority right now. But in any case, these AI agents, they aren't just your static prompts. So they are actually dynamic decision makers that can analyze data and choose action based off of the context that they are given. So for example, an AI agent, it could analyze some customer inquiries. It could then decide whether to send an automated response, update a CRM record, or just escalate the issue to a support team. So this makes building AI systems pretty intuitive, even if you're not an expert in machine learning or whatever else, whatever background you may need. Last one is custom code nodes. So these are kind of the biggest features for me. And I would say the biggest features of NN or any other platform. So unlike make.com, where running custom code often requires premium plans, as I said, or other third party services, NN just allows you to write some custom logic directly into your workflows, which is amazing. So you can manipulate some sort of data, you can call APIs or just handle any other edge cases all within the platform itself, which is super useful. Now let's get into make.com. The first feature that I want to talk about, which I should be highlighting is the error handling. So make.com, it really excels with this feature. You know, your custom error handlers can reroute errors dynamically, which I can do, but I would say make.com is a little bit more fluent, if you will. So they just have a lot more modules and nodes that you can actually break down and has more use cases. They also have fail safe notifications to alert you immediately when something goes wrong. And if they're in complete executions, these can store partial scenario runs so they can manually resolve these issues later on without losing any sort of progress. So there are just some nuances to each one. So N8N, it does offer their own error handlers, which I've covered in the past. So go check out those videos if you want to see how you can use error handlers within n8n but i find them to be much more efficient and practical within make.com number two is the execution logs so these are just going to be detailed logs showing you exactly where errors occurred in your workflows and this just makes debugging a lot easier so this doesn't mean that n8n or gumloop doesn't have execution logs because they definitely do but again i'm just speaking from personal experience i find make.com to be more practical and it's just you know easier to actually debug whatever I'm trying to fix. Number three is the pre-built integrations. So as I mentioned earlier, with over 1500 app integrations ready to go pretty much, make.com is going to be ideal if you need something that just works out of the box. So this doesn't mean that you can't use whatever API that you want with an NN or Gumloop. It just means you will have to go through another step and make those API calls manually, which I mean, it can only take an extra few minutes, but for some people that can make a big difference. Now let's talk about Gumloop a little bit. Gumloop, it really takes a different approach. So they focus heavily on AI and browser-based automations, I would say. So the first one that really caught my eye is the Chrome extension builder. So this feature, it lets you automate browser tasks like scraping job postings from LinkedIn or filling out forms without writing any code at all, which is pretty cool. So what you can do, you can scrape data from, let's say, e-commerce websites, automate form submissions on sites without any sort of API. You could also extract data from multi-step interactions. Number two is its web scraping nodes. So Gumloop offers specialized nodes for things like the web agent scraper, which this just automates multi-step interactions. The website crawler, which is going to extract data from multiple pages and the AI web browsing agent, which is going to just use some sort of LLM model to navigate websites pretty intelligently, I would say. And also it's AI nodes, generally speaking. So Gumloop, it simplifies AI integration with its drag and drop nodes, you know, similar to N8N and make.com. But of course, these are going to be powered by whatever LLM that you choose, like OpenAI or maybe Claude Sonnet. And this can be used for tasks like document summarization or lead scoring. So their AI nodes, it allows some really niche practical solutions. But in any case, when it really comes to learning these resources, I would say both N8N and make.com, they have pretty large communities and plenty of tutorial videos online, especially as more creators are switching to N8N recently, as there's been a huge uptick in people posting videos and writing this, you know, N8N trend as you guys have all probably seen. And of course, as I mentioned, since Gumloop is a little bit of a new player to this space, they just have fewer tutorials available at the moment, but they do offer some pretty advanced documentation and templates. And in the near future, I'd say we will definitely start seeing more tutorials on it. Who knows if you guys would like, I could start posting some Gumloop tutorials. Just let me know down in the comments 
comments below what you guys uh, prefer to see. I'd be more than happy to show you guys some tutorials on that and kind of broaden my reach. But at the end of the day, it's really going to be personal preference because all these platforms are essentially just visual representations of code, as you should know. But before we kind of end this video, let's also get into one of the most important segments, which is going to be the pricing of each platform. Pricing's really where these platforms differ from one another. So with N8N, you should know because I've mentioned it a few times already, self-hosting is completely free if you have the technical skills and it's you don't really have to be a technical expert or savant, I should say, to manage this yourself. Or you can host it elsewhere on a third party server. So you can host this for Railway for just $5 a month or DigitalOcean, Docker, whatever. It's super cheap if you just use any of these third party services. So again, check out some of my previous videos going over if you would like to see how to self-host N8N. Also to add to that with N8N, if you just wanted to use their cloud, which is what I used for the longest time. So it's about, I think $20 to start off with where you, know, you get a set amount of executions. And if you run out, you'll have to scale to the next model. So similar pricing structures or engagements to make.com, where if you run out of operations, then you can just scale up and keep paying more on their cloud platform. So this is a pretty efficient way or a practical way for the common user to use N8N. But now let's talk about make.com. So make, it starts off at $9 a month. And as I mentioned, it also uses operation or executions. So this is just a pricing model where every trigger check or you know data transformation counts as an operations use. So it can get quite expensive once you are scaling past $9 a month. You know, once you get up to 10,000 operations, you'll have to start paying about $20 and then, you know, just keep goes on from there. Now with Gumloop, this similarly operates on a credit-based system starting at $97 a month, but costs, of course, like NN and make.com, they can escalate quickly if you're running some pretty AI heavy tasks, like a lot of document processing or web scraping, as you guys could probably imagine. So all in all, which tool should you use? Well, if you're technical and you really value flexibility, I would go with N8N personally. But if simplicity and you know scalability are pretty key for you and you're new to everything, well, then maybe start with make.com. And if browser-based automation is a huge need for you and it's going to be you know your day-to-day, -day, then Gumloop might be worth exploring for yourself. So, I mean, each one has its own nuanced differences, its own pros and its own cons, of course, just like anything in this world. But yeah, it's all just going to come down to personal preference and which one you just really enjoy using. It's just like picking a CRM in a sense. But yeah, guys, let me know which tool you guys are leaning towards and what your thoughts are on each one. If you've used one over the other or why you might use one over the other. And if you are interested in more videos like this, then like and subscribe and drop a comment and check out my other videos. So most of my videos go over N8N and N8N tutorials, but I used to upload a bunch of make.com videos and tutorials in the past. So feel free to check those out. Anyways, I thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video.